Salut Yana et bienvenue au Corp aujourd'hui. Alors donc, j'espère que tu vas bien chez, chez vous. Alors, right guys, I hope you're well, hope you're all happy. Um, welcome to today's lesson. So last lesson we looked at the imperfect, which we talked about how tough this was. It's definitely the toughest bit of French grammar you'll need to know for GCC. It's a proper A-level tense and hopefully you've worked hard on that and, and you're happy with it because what we're going to do today is the first bit of the lesson we are going to test you on the imperfect to see what you know, to drill the key phrases in the imperfect so you can use them but also there's a chance to test your deeper understanding. Can you do like um, the formula to get the imperfect and that's what we're going to look at. Then we're going to test your imperfect in context, right? I'm going to introduce a new style of exam question that you haven't really looked at and we only start looking at in year 10. On your exam, on the reading, you'll have a translation from French into English, which is what we're looking at today. On the writing exam, you'll have a translation from English into French. We're gonna look at the translation. Now, historically, the translation is the lowest scoring exam question in the country. Why? it's really hard to do so we're going to look at some tactics today we're going to talk about how to use translation and what you need to do to make sure you can get big marks so that's our plat du genre which means like menu for the day what we're going to do is test your imperfect drill some of the imperfect phrases and then i'll talk about your translation technique and then you are going to have a go at a gcc piece of translation to see what you can do it's going to be fun today i'm sure that's what you're thinking in your heads alors donc on va commencer mes petits et voilà vous savez ce qu'il faut faire Copier plutôt, inventer la date, copier le titre du genre, il était une fois, translation skills, et je sais que tu n'as pas de post-it, mais tu peux faire ça dans les cahiers, comment dire, I went, comment dire, I used to play, comment dire, I used to like playing, utiliser les lettres pour vous aider, je vous donne, quoi, une minute pour faire ça, mettez Mr. Ennis sur pause, traduisez les six choses, copier les dates et les types, et quand tu es prêt, recommence le vidéo. Alors, mes petits chauffeurs, donc on y va. So, I've already really talked about what we're going to do today is testing your past tense, the perfect but mainly the imperfect, and looking at these translation skills to make sure you're ready for that part of the exam. That's what we're going to do today. I really like doing the translations, I'm really good at them. So, let's go through it. First off, you'll need to know and translate these key phrases today. So, I went is in the perfect tense, it's an être verb. Do you know what it is? Si, je suis allé. Every single person doing the GCC will use that phrase in the past tense, so make sure you know it. Alors, I used to play, I've got, just got a JJ here, shouldn't there be something in between a letter to say used to? No, because the word used to is at the end of a verb, it's a verb ending. So, I used to play is je jouais, voilà, and that AIS on the end here, this is how we say used to that AIS verb ending is what to do. I used to like playing. Now I've got J-A-J. -J. So I used to like. I need to change the verb aimé into the imperfect and then put my infinitive. J'aimé, joué. This is I used to like. J'aimé. And then I've got my infinitive with the ER in the end, which means playing or to play. Voilà. Right. Well done if you got these two. Numéro 4. This is a key imperfect phrase that you all need to know. Il y a is there is, il y aura is there will be, il y aurait is there would be, il y avait is there was, voilà, where there used to be, il y avait, and now you've seen it. Alors, la différence ici, c'est veut dire it is en anglais, it was is, c'était, voilà. So only a regular verb in the imperfect, or so they say, because it changes to et, and then we've got our ending. Why is this a t, and the others over here an s? Because... The verb ending, ch, 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 changes. This is the pattern for je and tu, A-I-S, A-I-S. For il, elle, on, for he, she, one, or it, because an it is masculine or feminine French, it changes to a T. Do you know the rest of the endings? I-O-N-S, I-E-Z, A-I-E-N-T. Boom, you got to be that good. Alors donc, let's see what you can do. I want to drill the key phrases first, because if you don't get all the, the rules for the imperfect, that's fine. You can still show the examiner you can use it, and get the credit to get a six plus. What we're gonna do is drill your key phrases, then we're gonna look at seven to eight. I'm gonna do a test on this. Donc, on va commencer. 
Hello my petit right guys, before we put you to the test on our endings, we're going to do a bit of revision, a bit of drilling of just like the key things you need to know for the imperfect. If you know 15 of these things, you're fine, you'll fly through the exam, you can get a 6, even a 7 if you just know these phrases. But I've been a bit tricky, so la deuxième colonne ici, regardez, 6, 7, 8, 9 et 10, c'est plus difficile. En anglais, I've put like you used to. We used to, he used to, me. En français, I've taken away the pronoun. There's no I, you, he, she. So how are you going to know what matches to what? Parce que the ending changes. There you go. So it's testing you on how you know what pattern matches to what. This is the tricky bit today. You know how this activity works. Alors donc, il faut me mettre ce pause et il faut se préparer. Après, les mots en bleu vont disparaître, il faut dire français, anglais, français, anglais aussi rapide que possible. Par exemple, one, I go, uh, je vais, I used to go, j'ai I went, je suis allé, I used to like go and j'ai allé, I'm going to go, je vais aller. Boom, see that? So tight, because they're all like the same verb. God, I'm good. Are you that good? Obviously not. See what you can do. Put me on pause now for one minute. When you restart me, I'll count you down and we'll go for it. Hello, mes petits. Right, guys, if you listen to me now, You've had your preparation time and you're ready to give it a go. 36 seconds, let me count you in. 3, 2, 1, allez! Hello, mes petits, soyez rapide. 15 seconds environ. Et 10. Et voilà, all right guys, excellent effort. So, did you get to the end? If you did, I think you've done really well. These are our must knows. Let's just make it that tiny bit harder. Et voilà, mes petits. Cette fois, j'ai pris uh, les lettres clés. Donc, il faut compléter la phrase en faisant l'acti, en, en faisant l'activité. Par exemple, I go, je vais, I used to go, j'allais, I went, je suis allé, I used to like going, j'aimais aller, I'm going to go, je vais aller, still go. Alors donc, il faut faire exactement ça, compléter les phrases pour moi aussi. Alors, que c'est difficile, you need to prepare, put me on pause when you prepare, when you think you can do this, restart the video, I'll count you down and I'll start making them disappear. Bon courage mes petits Hello, mes petits, you're right, guys. So, if you're listening to me now, you think you're ready for this, it's gonna be tough. Alors, courage, tout le monde, I'll count you down. 3, 2, 1, allez! C'est rapide, soyez rapide, mes petits. Alors, environ 10 secondes, c'est rapide aujourd'hui. Et 5. Et 3, 2, 1. Et ah, c'est fini, mes petits. Right, guys, this is a lot tougher. Well done if you got to the end. So, when it comes to the imperfect, and I know I've put a few different tweaks and different tenses in here as well, this is your must know, is what you really need to do. If you can do this, you're going to do really, really well. This is like the core vocab. Let's test you on everything we can on the imperfect. Alors, vous savez ce qu'il faut faire. Sur la feuille, à uh, ce frog, il y a un contrôle de vocabulaire. Regardez le contrôle. Et voilà. Donc, qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire? Il y a deux parties aujourd'hui. Donc, pardon, il y a trois parties aujourd'hui. Par question 1, 2 et 3, il faut traduire j'allais. J'avais et il y avait en anglais. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Pensez, c'est quel verbe? Qu'est-ce que c'est en anglais? Par 4 et 5, qu'est-ce que c'est en français? D'accord? Non. Par 6, 7, 8 et 9, ici, oh, c'est pas bien. Ici, il faut mettre le mot ici dans le bon espace. Attention au fin du mot. Par exemple, Aller with an AIS, it's got to either match to je 
ou tu which one jet ais is uh, either je or tu what's the ending for i z what pronoun does this match to alors attention not only do you need to match the pronoun mais pensez du contexte de la phrase aujourd'hui par exemple numéro 7 parle des livres de Roldol. C'est qui Roldol? Qu'est-ce que c'est un livre? Donc, c'est quel verbe? Ici, you can't eat them, that wouldn't match. Anyway, qu'est-ce qu'on fait avec les livres de Roldol? Normalement, tu veux le verbe pour compléter la phrase. C'est très difficile aujourd'hui, mes petits. Beaucoup plus compliqué pour les idiotes dans la classe, comme ce Ruben et Arian, par exemple. Mais les autres, donc, qui étaient pas sept. C'est le cible aujourd'hui. Donc, 7, c'est bien. Si on gagne plus de 7, 9, ce sera fantastique aujourd'hui. 11 ou plus, formidable, mes petits. Alors, donc, let's say 4 minutes for this. If you put me on pause for 4 minutes, and then when your timer goes off, restart the video, I'll go through the answers. Now, I've said this before, but I want to say it again on video. This isn't a chance for you to look back at last lesson and sort of revise all that revision that's not really testing you. I want this to be a test. So book shut, work straight on the sheet or type it. Don't look back at last lesson's vocabulary. Really test yourself. Do you really know this? Because if you don't, that's fine, but you can pause this video. You can watch last lesson to get some ideas and then come back to it. That's what work on the lockdown really is. It's about you being independent and you testing yourself. So don't look, don't just get 12 out of 12 without the actual effort of earning it and using your knowledge. Put me on pause now, set your timers for four minutes. Four minutes time, I'll blitz through the answers. Seven is a good mark today. Keep that in mind. Alors, sit sera super aujourd'hui. Bon courage mes petits. Toi, deux, un. On y va. <coughs> Alors mes petits. Right guys, how did you find that? I know this is really, really tough today. Let's see what you've got. N'oubliez pas, 7, c'est le nom d'émission. Je serai super content si vous avez 7 ou plus. Alors donc, on y va mes petits. Let's see what you can do. Donc le premier, j'allais... So we know it's I used to something. Think about what verb this is. Is aller. Donc, ça veut dire either I used to go or I was going. Well done if you got that. If you put either used to or was, you get one mark. If you put both, you don't get two marks. Don't be stupid. Alors, numéro deux. J'avais encore une fois. We know the je in the AIS means I was or I, or I used to. What verb is this? C'est avoir. Donc, I used to have, or it could mean I was having, j'avais une mauvaise journée, I was having a bad day or something like that. Alors, numéro 3, il y avait, now this is key, il y a, is there is, il y avait, is there was, or there used to be, plus a thing, like il y avait un cinéma dans ma ville, there used to be a cinema in my town. Alors, numéro 4, I used to be, you've got to know this, there's an accent on it as well. If you've not got the accent, no mark, it is. Jeté, voilà, just like city, that E has always got the accent, it's got to have that, if you don't have the accent, you have got that wrong, cross it out, voilà, alors, numéro, that's a bit confusing actually, looks like that's correct, voilà, donc, numéro 5, we used to hate, now this is really tough, so think about our steps, we is new, and our ending for used to is I-O-N-S, then it's the verb to hate, so it's nous détestons, Get rid of that ONS, you've got detest, and then add the right ending, nu detest ion. Voilà, you've got to have that I, otherwise it's in the present tense. It says we hate, nu detest ion means we hate, that is what you need for the mark. Well done if you got that. Number five, definitely the toughest question so far. So we've had five cap uh, already, seven will be the pass mark, keep that in mind. So if you've only picked up a few and you've got a few wrong, that's fine. This is definitely the toughest bit of the test. Down here, it is still tough, but we can work it out. Donc, si se dit, je, des bonbons, tu le tends quand je, plus jeune. Alors donc, it's je, so it's got to be something ending in A-I-S. So we've got a lot of options here, but this starts with a vowel. This starts with a vowel. And if it starts with a vowel, we couldn't have the je, so it's got to be the only one that doesn't start with a vowel. C'est manger. Je mangeais des bonbons, qui veut dire en anglais I used to eat sweets, 
tu le temps, all the time, when, is it going to be quand j'allais plus jeune, ou quand j'étais plus jeune, il doit être quand j'étais plus jeune, qui veut dire la phrase complète en anglais, I used to eat sweets all the time when I was younger. Voilà, alors, le numéro 7, elle, les livres de Roldol. Alors, donc, c'est elle, donc, pensez des fins, for the elle form, it's got to be AIT, so it's got to be this verb, je lisais les livres de Roldol. Uh, she used to read Roldol books. Alors, numéro 8, ils, beaucoup de télévision, surtout les Teletubbies. Are you lot too young for Teletubbies? No? Alors, donc, I remember them. Ils, if it's the il form, then our ending has got to be A-I-E-N-T, which matches to the verb regarder, which would mean, ils regardaient beaucoup de télévision, surtout les Teletubbies, qui veut dire en anglais, they used to watch loads of TV, especially the Teletubbies. Voilà, et finalement, numéro 9, quand vu, jeune, vu du judo, es-tu à la piscine suivante? Alors donc, quand vu, What's the ending for vu? It's got to be this one here, I-E-Z. Qu'on vu, feu, oh non, non, attends, it's got to be, there's two with I-E-Z. So, qu'on vu, étiez jeune, vu faisiez du judo, et tu allais à la piscine suivant, qui veut dire en anglais, when you were young, you used to do judo, and you used to go to the cinema, uh, to the to swimming pool often. Et voilà, right guys, a really good effort here. Such a tough test. Give yourself a mark out of 12 for me, et oui, avec ton stylo rouge. And remember, 7 out of 12 is a very good mark today. Bon effort, mes petits, an excellent start. If you've not quite got 7, go back to last lesson and have a little look, or just go back to verbal volleyball again and draw the phrases and have a little look. Seven is the golden mark today. If you've got seven or more, you're good to carry on. I'm going to do something very different today. Je vais expliquer en français. Hello, mes petits. Right, guys, if you're carrying on, you've done really well so far. You know our key phrases for the imperfect, and obviously you can use the imperfect in your writing and speaking, which is great. But today, yes, we're so looking at translation, but you'll need to recognize these different tenses. Now, we can do that in our writing, our speaking, and our reading. But when it comes to listening, when people are talking, you'll need to hear the difference between je joue, je jouais, and je jouerai. Take the last two, je jouais, je jouerai. Je jouais, je jouerai. They almost sound the same. There's just that e uh sound in the middle that changes it. Je jouais is I used to play. Je jouerai is I would play. You need to hear these slight little differences to work out what to do. There's other clues as well. We're going to do a listening now, which focuses on the different tenses. Alors, mes petits, c'est ce qu'on a ici. C'est cela, oui, vous savez ce qu'il faut faire. Donc, première chose à faire, il faut taper sur le hyperline ici et vous allez arriver à un site de web qui va vous demander d'entrer une code qui est celui-ci. Donc, copier et coller la code pour l'enregistrement aussi. Voilà. Quand vous avez l'enregistrement, vous allez écouter à 8%. Ils vont dire ce qui se faisait dans le passé. Par exemple, j'aimais jouer au foot et ce qu'ils font maintenant. Mais maintenant, je préfère jouer au basket. Donc, il faut écrire en français ce qu'ils aimaient dans le passé et ce qu'ils aiment faire maintenant. Encore une fois, dans le passé, quand j'étais enfant, j'aimais jouer au basket, mais maintenant, je préfère le foot, c'est plus rapide. Par exemple, voilà. Donc, complete the uh, box, what they used to do, what they do now. Now, for the first few, they'll do it in the right order, then they'll mix it up. They might start here, and then talking about now, and then say, but in the past, or when I was young, and go back in time, you've got to know when they're talking about the present, when they're talking about the past, that's the trick today. La défi additionnel, c'est ici mes petits, they're going to say all of these things, right, in the listening. Can you listen out for them? Can you tell me what they are in French? If you can, brilliant. When we go through, the transcript is another chance to look for this as well. Now this little number here. I'm telling you what number they say. It's so number two is going to say I was married. Number four is going to say I changed my mind. For before and for going out, I'm not going to tell you what number they're in. You can search for them. So, put me on pause now. 
go on the link, listen to the file. You're completing this in French today. The answers are in French. So think about changing the verb. If it's talking about il, el, what's that verb in the imperfect? What is it in the present? See what you can do. Put me on pause. Do the listening. You can listen to it as many times as you want. You can pause it, write your answer, listen again and check. Absolutely fine. When you restart the video, I'll show you the transcript and we'll go through some answers. Bon courage, mes petits. On y va. Allo, mes petits. Right, guys. So, obviously, the listening is really short. It looks really easy when I see the transcript, but it's, it's more about listening for the different tenses. So, put me on pause. Read through one, two, three, and four. Check your answers. Remember, all of these are talking about je. You need to change it. So instead of um, j'aimais la géographie, you need il aimait la géographie. So what changes here? We've also got to change this. Think about how to answer in French. That's the real tricky bit for this. Put me on pause. See if you can fill out your grid with these answers. Allons mes petits, et la deuxième partie, same thing, they're quite short, yes, but you have to change the verb to talk about others, think about how you need to change all this, check your answers as you're doing that, don't forget the extra challenge as well, see if you can find these things, put me on pause now, put me on pause now, and I'll go through the answers on the next slide, on y va! Allons mes petits, right, let's blitz for our answers, so this is what you should have, dans le passé, Aime la géographie. Si I have changed the verb. Maintenant, il ou elle aime le dessin. Numéro 2. Uh, il ou elle était marié. Maintenant, il est divorcé. Elle est divorcé. Unlucky, but you know, sometimes things aren't built to last. Alors, numéro 2. Uh, dans le passé, il habitait en France. Maintenant, il habite en Angleterre. Numéro 4. Il rêvait d'être professeur. It's a beautiful verb. Rêver is the verb to dream. So, dans mes rêves is in my dreams. Dans tes rêves is like in your dreams. So, like, say if Andrea asked the boy out, they'd say that back to her in French. Dans tes rêves, in your dreams, Andrea. Alors, donc, uh, maintenant, il, elle rêve d'être musicien. Uh, elle rêve d'être musicien. Numéro 5. Dans le passé, il était timide. Maintenant, il est, elle est aventureuse. Numéro 6, dans le passé, il ou elle portait des vêtements de marque, which means wore designer clothes. Maintenant, il porte un jean et un t-shirt. Let themselves go. Numéro 7, dans le passé, il ou elle détestait le fit. Maintenant, il déteste le golf. Et finalement, numéro 8, dans le passé, il ou elle allait à New York. Maintenant, il ou elle va à Paris. So, this is the toughest bit, I think. Change now, verb. Give yourself a mark out of 8 plus 8. 16 for me. And then our extra challenge. I was married. Is j'étais marié. I was married or I used to be married. I've changed my mind. J'ai changé la vie. So, you know, like, avis means opinion. So, j'ai changé la vie is what you say in French. Before is avant. And then for going on out is pas sortir. Voilà. Right, guys, a really good effort. On our listening, you've drilled through the key tenses. We've tested you on your knowledge of the tense of our test. And now we've checked you understand it and you can hear the nuances between the different tenses. Let's move on to talk about our translation skills. Hello, me pity. Right, guys, so we've tested you on the imperfect tense. We've ran through some listening skills so you can hear the difference when people are changing tenses but the next step is going to be the toughest we're going to look at translation skills now they're going to use different texts in your translation to see if you can recognize them and to see if you need know their meanings to translate them and you know all those rules this is definitely one of the most challenging parts of the GCSE. but if you prepare and you practice you'll get so many marks through this this is easy marks the country does really badly at this but Glenforn does really well because we practice it more so Let's look at some translation techniques using both our past tenses today. We're going to do the slightly easier but still challenging going into English today. So there's three things you need to remember. Think of this. You're in the exam. You've smashed through the reading paper. And the very last part of the reading paper is asking you to translate a paragraph. Think back to this moment as we go through our skills. So there's three big things or three big areas where people fall on. First one, in that translation, they're going to put some vocabulary 
that you won't know. Now, maybe you will know it because you've revised so hard, there's nothing they can't throw at that you don't know. But chances are, looking at past translations and the sort of language they use, they're going to give you something what I call left field, something out of the ordinary that you haven't really looked at in class because that will have a lot of unknown vocabulary. But don't worry, you're still able to translate it. It's all about working out what those words you don't know are and getting the expression. The second thing they're going to do that translation both of them are jam-packed full of tenses to see if you know the difference between them and if you can work all the grammar you need to be on top of that and finally they'll give you what are called false friends i know what you're thinking not andrea what we're talking about is false friends is a word like um what kind of thing oh sensible voilà a word like sensible in french which looks like sounds like and is written like sensible in english but it doesn't mean sensible, it means sensitive. They're always gonna put faux amis, false friends into this, and you need to know them to make sure you're not caught out. Let's look at all three, let's go through some translation techniques. Et voilà, so here we go. In the exam, they will give you words you don't know, and you'll need to work it out to get the marks, but don't worry, this isn't as hard as it sounds. Think about these two rules. First off, context is key. What other words do you know and how does that relate to what you need to translate that you don't know? Second, beep it out. That doesn't mean like swearing when you see a word you don't know. What I want you to do is say the sentence, bleep the words that you don't know and then what could they be? Here's an example, this is one from today. Napoleon commandait ses camarades de classe pendant les batailles de bulles de neige. Loads of unknown vocabulary here. Context is key. Who? was Napoleon. Hopefully you know who Napoleon was. If Miss Jobson is your history teacher, you will have no idea. So Napoleon was the emperor of France. He was a soldier who rose up the ranks and eventually became the emperor in charge of the whole of France, the ruler of France. So that's the context with Napoleon. Commandé ses camarades de classe pendant les batailles de bulles de neige. Right, so the rest is unknown, but from the context of Napoleon, let's work it out. Commandé, imperfect tense, he used to do what? Commandé, we might not know it, but it looks like the English, to command, and he was in the army, he was a commander of the French forces in all the battles. So, from this, we can work out that the first two words in Napoleon, used to command, c'est camarade de classe. Now you've seen this word, camarade, it's like the word comrades, but that's different, obviously that's from Russia and, and links with the Bolsheviks. What is a comrade, if you say that? What is a comrade? What is a comrade of class? A class comrade? Your comrades in class? You wouldn't say that. You wouldn't translate that. It doesn't make any sense in English. Who are your class comrades? So Napoleon used to command his class comrades during... Okay, what? So let's go back to this. It's not your class comrades. It's your class mates or the other people in your class. So I'd say Napoleon used to command his classmates during les batailles de boules de neige. The hell is that? All right, okay, so I don't know any of these words apart from neige is snow and a boule is a ball or a bowl. So, balls of snow, snowballs. Les batailles is a battle. So, during the battles of balls of snow, no, what's it saying? Snowball fights. So the whole sentence goes, Napoleon used to command his classmates during snowball fights, which is the legend, which is probably complete rubbish because Napoleon grew up in Corsica, which is an island like in the Mediterranean. It's really hot. There's no snow there. So it is rubbish. But still, that is what this sentence is saying. Do you see how I worked out from the context, from the idea of talking about Napoleon that helped me with all the unknown and eventually I could translate it. That's what you'll need to do. Look at these now. Put me on pause. I've put in red, sometimes in blue, words you won't know. So put me on pause. Read through these. I want to know what these red words are. Pause me now. See what you can work out. Hello, all right, guys. If you restarted me, you've thought about these. Did you work them out? So let's have a look. Number one. Elle déteste partager sa chambre avec sa sœur. You might know this verb. She hates something, her room, with her sister. Partager then. She hates what? Her room with her sister. What can you do with your room? 
is sharing is what you need she hates sharing her room with her sister so obviously that's the verb if you didn't know it you do now partager is our verb to share and think about this if you put something into parts you're sharing it out alors numéro deux elle sort les clients au café all right i know elle is she i know au café is at the cafe Elle sort les clients. What is that? Elle, what, what, what can you do at a, at a coffee shop? Les clients. Clients is like, I mean, a lawyer has clients. A business has clients. At a cafe, they're customers. So she, what customers at the cafe? She serves them. Voilà. She serves the customers in the cafe. Easy. All right. This one's easier as well. Quand j'étais jeune. So when I was young. That's your context. Think about little kids. J'aimais jouer à. I used to like playing à. And then this is the word we don't know. But we know it's a game because they're playing it. So, is there anything I can work out here? Pierre, fouille, ciseaux. Ah, it's a scissors. So, I used to like playing something, something, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Et voilà, see what I've done there? So, just from one word, I can work out what the final one means. And then finally, en juillet, chaque année, nous allons à Cornwall pour rester dans notre caravan. So, Ah, oh, this is the tough one. In July, chaque is a key word. Something year, we go to, this isn't how the French spell Cornwall, this is a mistake. We go to Cornwall to stay in a caravan. So, in July, something year, we go, present tense. So, it's got to be every year. Voilà, si I work that out. Now, that is what you need to do. That wasn't the best example number four. See if you can work out what they are from the context you've been given. All right, very quickly, let's blitz the other thing. Alors, the second thing that you guys need to know is that tenses need to be translated differently sometimes. You need to pick the one that looks most natural. Let me sh let me show you some examples. So, this says, finally, j'ai fini mes devoirs, hurrah. Finally, is it, I finished my homework, hurrah, right? or I finished, it'd be I finished finished yeah so this is the difference between french and english in english there's two different ways to say it in french there's one how do you translate it look at number two je fume des cigarettes uh, tous les jours mais j'ai arrêté so this either means i have stopped or i stopped and this either means i was smoking or i used to smoke so you're the english speaker which one sounds right i used to smoke 10 cigarettes a day but i've stopped is how i'd say it one more example Quand Arthur était jeune, il était très mignon, mais maintenant il est très laid. So, this either says, when Arthur was being young, he was being very cute, but now he is very ugly. Or, when Arthur was young, he used to be very cute, but now he is very ugly. That, I think, would be the ideal translation. Do you see what I've done? You've got to make sure it sounds correct in English to get the marks. Alors, one more thing to look at. A faux ami. Make a note of these because this is what people get wrong all the time and they're going to put them in your real assessment. So, actuellement, elle travaille à l'étranger. So, yeah, so that I could translate to actually, she travels abroad. No way. Actuellement means currently or at the moment. It doesn't mean actually, elle travaille does not mean she travels. It means she works. And l'étranger isn't the stranger, it's abroad. La journée était fatigant. People always do this. The journey was tiring. Non, c'est un faux ami. La journée is the day. And then mon frère est sensible. My brother is sensible. Non, this means my brother is sensitive. These words are called faux amis. You need to write them down. Make sure you don't get them confused. They look like words in English. They are a trap. Hello, mes petits. Right, oh, this lesson is really long. I've taught you loads. Those are the tactics you need. Let's put you to the test, shall we? Hello, mes petits. So, I'll give you five minutes to do this task. Let me show you what I want. Alors, c'est ça la feuille, tout le monde. Je vous ai donné un texte qui parle de Napoléon Bonaparte. Ancienne, empereur de France. Voilà, qui veut dire The childhood of Napoleon Bonaparte former it can mean old as well but in this context using my translation skills former emperor of france alors il faut traduire le texte ici 
en anglais, s'il vous plaît. Donc, quand il était petit, qu'est-ce que c'est en anglais? Traduisez tout le texte en cinq minutes, mes petits. Cinq minutes sera parfait. Traduisez la phrase pour moi. And this is your extra challenge. You can use the text on Napoleon to help you. I want you to write in French and I want you to write a similar little paragraph about Victor Hugo who wrote um, Les Miserables and uh, the one about the, hunch, the Hunchback of Notre Dame and Les Enfants. He wrote loads of books, Victor Hugo. So have a little look at this. It tells you uh, where he used to live, who was in his family. He had two brothers. He used to be this. He used to like doing this. He liked this. This tells you all about Victor Hugo in the imperfect tense. See if you can write some sentences on him. Guys, this is extra challenge only. Allo mi fiti. Let's say five minutes. Restart the video after five minutes. See what you can do. Bon courage mi fiti. On y va. Allo mi fiti. Right guys, let's go through the answers. How do you get on with this? It is a lot harder than it looks, I think, to do this properly and to get it all right. I hope you enjoyed it. I used to love doing translations. We had to do one every week at uni into French. And it was so, I used to take me like three, four hours to do, but it was really, really fun. It was about like a thousand words. It was really, really fun to do. And I just learned so much vocab from it. So let's put you to the test. Let's see what we've got. So the first bit, quand il était petit, you can have when he was small. I'd rather say when he was young. It doesn't literally mean when he was small. He was always small. Napoleon Bonaparte was the same height as me exactly. Remember that, yeah? So uh, about average height. So when he was younger, when he was small, Napoleon. Habité à Ajaccio en Corse. Now, this is where your cultural capital is going to matter because coming from Saturn, you might not know these things. Napoleon used to live, this is the name of the town, it's now the capital, Corse is Corsica. So, Napoleon used to live in Ajaccio in Corsica. So, Corsica is a French island. I went there on holiday last year. I was going to go this year again, but it's not going to happen now. Anyway, so it's a French island in the Med. It's an amazing place to go. It's just off Sardinia in Italy. It's just above it. A beautiful French island. It's got mountains. It's got mad beaches. It's like, oh, it's, be it's absolutely beautiful. And it's where Napoleon's from. Uh, il avait quatre frères et trois sœurs. So he had four brothers and three sisters. Et habité avec ses parents. And he used to live with his parents. Of course, he used to live with his parents. Uh, il était sérieux et travailleur. Okay, so this is tough because this isn't a verb, it's an adjective. He was serious or and hard working, or he used to be serious and hard working. Mais il n'avait pas beaucoup d'amis, but he didn't have many friends, like Sir Ruben. Alors, entre 15 et 16 ans, il était dans une école militaire en France, between. 15 and 16 or between the ages of so this word entre means in between ideally i think i put between the ages of in english to make it sound more natural he was at military school in france U, il aimait les mathématiques where he used to like maths selon la légende right they give you the word selon i don't know why because they'd never do that in the exam they expect you to know that selon la légende according to legends Napoléon commandait ses camarades de classe pendant les batailles de Bulle de Neige. We've already looked at this to go through. Napoleon used to command his school friends or schoolmates during snowball fights. Et voilà, right guys, excellent effort. If you're close to that, give yourself a mark. I've like, pause it and rewind it. I don't know how many it's out of. Give yourself a mark about how many you've done. This is what the translation section is. Hopefully, you're feeling more confident about this for the exam and for what you need to do. If you got onto the extra challenge, here's some of the things that you might have said. They don't have to be exactly like this, but there's some key sentences. Now, if you can talk about other people in the imperfect tense, that is how to get a seven, eight or a nine. It is a top skill. Well done if you got onto our extra challenge. Allo mi petit. So then, guys, hopefully you're feeling more confident in this. Let me just remind you of this week's homework. Et voilà, guys, this is your, this is your weekly homework, um, all on the imperfect tense. We've talked about how important this is. 
to get a grade seven, eight or nine, you need to absolutely master these things. So make sure you get on it and complete it in addition to this lesson. Um, and that's it, really. Have a nice half time. If this is the last lesson before half time, I think there might be one more, but still have a nice half time. There won't be any lessons that week. And then we'll start off again in June and I'll keep in touch with what they say. It doesn't look like you guys will be back at school until September. But if that is the case, you don't need to worry about your French. We're miles ahead of where we're meant to be. We usually do this module in year 10. So we've started your GCC early. So what I'll do is we'll revise it a bit in September and make sure you're ready. But by the time it comes to year 11, you'll be in a really, really good place. So, and it's the same with all your subjects. You're going to be absolutely fine. So don't fret about school and not doing well. You're going to do well. Uh, make sure you're working hard at home. If you've got any problems, email your tutors, email your head of year. Right, guys, have a good half time. See you after the break.